The church in the Bible is never called a temple, by the way. You must be careful about all these Christians who say, Oh, come to the house of God on Sunday, right? S-O-N-D-A-Y. That is absolute nonsense. They say, come to the church of God, come to the house of God, come to the temple and all that stuff on the Sabbath day, they say on Sunday, or the Sunday, S-O-N Sunday. That's all nonsense. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, when there is a reference to the house of God, it's never a reference to any building. The church is never the house of God, or the church building is never the house of God. It's the body of Christ that is the house of God. And of course, when Christians talk about the church building as the sanctuary or the house of God, it's all to get into your pockets, to get your money. That's it. That's the main reason behind all that. No building is the temple of God today for the Christian. No building is uh, the house of God for a Christian today. The temple of God is the believer's body. The house of God is the church made up of living human beings and of course those who have gone before as well. That's the body of Christ. That's the house of God. And the temples are our bodies and God dwells in our temples. So we don't get into all this stuff about Sunday and come to the house of God to worship God in the sanctuary. All that is Jewish stuff. Got nothing to do with us. All right, so the thing is, these things are happening. They're moving very fast and the Lord willing in our lifetime, you're going to see some of these things come into place, fall into place. Uh, as I've said, the church is not going to probably see the Antichrist, but if there's any movement toward the building of the temple, we might see it before the Antichrist gets involved with it. So if you see any of these things happening, and I see them happening right now in Jerusalem, then we know for sure that the time is at hand. You must be ready, Christian. You must be ready and you do what God has called you to do. Doesn't mean that you panic and uh, you know, run here and there not knowing what to do like a headless chicken. No, that's not what you're going to do because the Lord is coming. But you have to be focused. Do what God has called you to do. Right? Spend time with the book. Spend time in prayer. Witnessing. Walking with the Lord. Doing go, you know, what God wants you to do. That's very important. And if you're an unsaved person, now would be a good time to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved right now. If you're unsaved, you must know that when the church is raptured, you will be left behind. And you will be on the earth when God unleashes his fury and, his, and pours out his wrath upon this earth. Go and read the book of Revelation. You're going to see how great destructions are coming upon the earth. And more than half the population of this world is going to be killed in their rebellion, in their sin against God. And they're going to go to hell. And God doesn't want that to happen. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be in the number who would be caught up out of this world before God pours out his anger, his fury upon this world. You say, how can I be a part of that group? Well, you have to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must realize that your righteousness cannot save you. Your religion cannot save you. Your morals cannot save you. Your education cannot save you. Nothing you have and nothing you do can ever save you. Jesus Christ can save you. If you put your trust in him, you need to repent of your self-righteousness and say, I cannot save myself. All my efforts are in vain. You must repent of that self-righteousness which has estranged you from God. And you say, Lord, I cannot do anything to save myself, but I want to be saved. I realize I'm a sinner. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And the Bible says that the wicked shall be turned into hell. That means you're going to go to hell one day. You're going to die in your sins and you're going to go to hell. You say to God, I don't want to go there. I want to be saved from my sins. I want to be saved from death. I want to be saved from hell. And I believe that Jesus took the punishment for my sins upon the cross. That he died in my place. And that he rose up again the third day. For my justification, as the Bible says, you don't have to understand that, but you just believe that Jesus died for your sins, your sins personally, in your place. He was buried and he rose up again on the third day. 
Why did God do that? Because he loved you. That's why he sent his son Jesus Christ to prove his love for sinners. Giving them a chance to be saved by putting their trust in his son and his finished work upon the cross. Jesus suffered, bled and died for your sins, my friend. To save you from your sins. To give you eternal life. To give you the forgiveness of sins that you don't deserve. That is God's love. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And you can do it right now, wherever you are. You don't need a priest. You don't need a pastor. You don't need a church. You don't need anything to be saved. You need wherever you are to trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Put your faith in Him. Say, Lord, I believe that you died for my sins, that you rose up again on the third day. If you can get hold of a King James Bible, you need to start reading it. And you need to find a King James Bible-believing church that you could join so that you can fellowship with other like-minded Christians and grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. That's God's plan for you. And God wants to save you. My prayer is that you would right now put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ.